it took a while, you know, for them to discover where we taped and everything. It, it wasn't, everything in those days was not instantaneous, you know, I mean, so then there began to be a couple of people around. I remember the first time I was on the Crosstown bus and I realized that there were two teenage girls seated across from me, clearly having recognized me and clearly talking about me. And I just wanted to disappear. I was so embarrassed. I wanted to be anywhere else in the world except on that bus. <laughs> Truthfully, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm very, very happy on stage. I'm very happy performing. But uh, I've gotten better about it as the years have gone on. But it, it, it was the first time it had ever happened to me. And um, in, even in recent years, people have approached me on buses and things. And I, I said, how did you recognize me? And they said, well, you know, by your face, basically, we know who you are. <laughs> Which, uh, I, I mean, it's years and years and years later. So at, at this point, it's rather flattering. But then I couldn't handle it at all. That I would go home to my hometown in Oklahoma, and there would be, you know, the little girls from next door would want my autograph or something or want their picture taken with me. And I, I was the same person, you know. I, I hadn't done anything differently. I. I was an actress, you know, that's just what I did. Mm -hmm. My reaction to, for instance, fan mail and fan mail, which I frequently got because, as I said, I was the most 60s character. I would get letters from young women, girls, saying, I love Carol and I want to be exactly like you. I wish I looked like you. I thought, this is the saddest thing I've ever heard in my life. You know, I thought, I wanted, to, I wanted to give them something that made them feel unique. You know, to me it was a very sad thing to say to someone, and I actually had one person say, I, I've always wanted to be you. And I just, I can't, I almost can't comprehend that what what's going on you know in that mm -hmm. that fragile ego <laughs> mm -hmm. I just find it very very distressing I did at the time and I still do um, now of course the fans are older I had actually never comprehended why the show was frightening and yet one day we, we had um, a segment or uh, several ran several episodes wherein a severed head was being carried around in a glass case. Now, every once in a while, the, the, the actor playing, it was basically a mask, but every once in a while, an actor whose mask it was, whose death mask it was, would poke his head up through the table and have the glass case put over him, and you would see his eyes open. Now. I didn't think much about it until I saw it on camera one day, and it scared me to death. <laughs> it was this, because I knew it was a severed head, and suddenly the eyes opened, and I thought, no wonder they're frightened. No wonder their moms don't want them to watch this show. This is terrifying. So that, but this was very, very late on. But that was the first time I realized, yeah, this is really scary. Because I, you know, we were on the set, it was laughs and jokes, and Louis Edmonds would, particularly with Alexandra and me, Louis Edmonds was just impossible. He would make jokes, he would preen, you know, he would be his, his incredible charming self, but he would get so far out there that Alexandra and I, at least twice that I can definitely recall, on a taping, had to turn our backs to the camera. We were shaking with laughter. Louis was just, he just had an, us in hysterics. So this, this was kind of the side I was seeing. Uh, we would read things that were written in fan magazines and soap opera digest and that kind of stuff because it was written, they were sent to us frequently, the magazines. But uh, I, I don't remember 
Now, again, this is uh, my personal recollection. I do not remember thinking at that time, wow, I am a part of history. Uh, people have said that in past years. I never, never remember having thought that. I thought this is a really difficult show to do because we don't stop. It's long days. I'm very tired. I'm very underpaid, which, of course, no, nobody in soaps is today. But no, I, I don't. Um, it was a job. That's a terrible, that's a terribly plebeian way to look at it. But all I ever wanted as an actor was a job.